Oh my gosh, I see her faces. We must be good. Well, Oh yeah. Good morning. And I can actually, actually it's good afternoon, isn't it? I'm, I'm my mm -hmm. time frame is all off because I, I normally would have done this a little earlier in the day, but I was teaching a workshop today. So Dolly was kind enough to, to meet a little later. Although you and I are in the same time zone. Yes. And it never fact, happens. This hardly ever happens. And, and you're, you're not even that far away from me, which makes me very happy. So I, I'm coming at you from Forest Lake and Dahlia, you're joining us from Rochester, which means we're in the same state, which makes me very happy. So welcome thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me so dahlia for those of you who who don't know you very well why don't you give us your bio tell us you know who you are what you're working on these days and, and then i'll just start pestering you with with questions sounds good um uh hi my name is dahlia uh i am a, currently a developer advocate just recently switched to that job before i was a developer lead at ibm um i work mainly on java i've worked on uh, tooling. Um, I've worked on application servers. If you're familiar with WebSphere, I worked on that for many years. Um, EJB, JPA, all that enterprise application stuff I worked on. Um, and uh, I've been really interested in helping folks move from Java versions. I know um, in the Java world, you know, with the new release cadence, folks have had a lot of questions about what to do with that and uh, moving versions and keeping up with Java. So I really like that topic. And then getting into dev advocacy, it's been very interesting um, this year. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. People change Java versions? I thought we just sat on 1.4 or 1.6 as long as humanly possible. And Yes. Or you just stay on eight forever because it works. Right. Why do we need to change? <laughs> Nothing ever needs to change. So, so I, I first recognized that you lived in this state when I, I tweeted something out from, so we didn't have the Minnesota State Fair this year, the great Minnesota get together where seemingly about a third or so of the state shows up. But we had a drive through fair, which was actually quite good. And I, 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 I hope we have a normal fair in 2021. But if we can continue to do the drive through in the like fall, I'm totally on board with that because it's very slick. Uh, but I, I, of course, got a couple of buckets of sweet Martha's cookies. And, and I tweeted that out and you recognize them. I thought, oh, you must be a native in order for you to know what that is, because that's clearly a Minnesota thing. So how did you find your way to Minnesota? Huh? Great question. Um, so I am actually uh, born um, and from Egypt, um, but when I was 40 days old, I moved to Qatar. <laughs> um, and it's a really tiny country um, in the Middle East. I grew up there. And then when I was 12, I moved to the U.S. Um, initially, when we were visiting the U.S., we went to New York, visited New York, all that good stuff. And then when my parents decided, let's move to the U.S., they decided to drop us in Iowa. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need, like, a music. That right. Goes it's like a sad down, trombone, down. right? Yeah, oh, oh. exactly. <laughs> so they exposed you to cosmopolitan, amazing New York, and then said, well, we're going to Iowa because... Yes cornfields. And I can say that as a Minnesotan because, you know, they're a neighbor, so we get to pick on them. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we moved to Iowa and um, it was definitely a change. Um, uh, yes. And I, went to, I, went to, I went to high school there and then I decided to go Iowa, to Iowa State University oh, for yeah. uh, college. And um, eventually, you know, IBM came to recruit there. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a really good a company to work for if you're in the Midwest. And then I ended up getting a job offer and then moved to Rochester, Minnesota. And my Fantastic. husband also got a job offer from there. So we both moved there. And actually my sister moved here too. So it's been really great to have um, my family kind of nearby. Nice. nice. My cat says hi. My cat decided to join me here. So so you're going to get awesome. pair interviewed by, by we me. And, well, kind of. I mean, he's he'll eventually, like his tail will probably show up here. I um, mean, he'll hit my microphone at least two or three more times because that's what he does. But my cat likes to lay like across me and if possible the laptop and the so there's a 99 percent chance he's gonna <laughs> hit some key and then god only knows what'll happen with obs or whatever else we got going on here but oh, i i love rochester rochester is a great city i i actually when i had my hip replaced i went to mayo because of course why wouldn't you it's the mayo clinic you know they're they they know what they're doing down there but mm -hmm. that's, that's fantastic 
So how have you liked this transition to dev advocacy? You, know, you and I were talking a bit about that before we started, and I know it's a recent switch for you. So what, what do you think about that? How do you like it? You know, what, what's that been like? Yeah, it's been a very big change um, because I'm used to uh, doing traditional development, you know, like everything from design to implementation to testing to verification, all this stuff. And then now I feel like I'm in a very different role, like very creative, yeah. very like um, kind of uh, it's not very defined like I'm used to. So it's... Right. Nice in one way, like you can take it where you need to go, but it's also like nerve wracking because it's like you have to really prioritize what you want to spend your time on, yeah. all those things. Um, but overall, it's been a really nice experience. I'm discovering a lot of things about what I enjoy as well, because, you know, before I would have to kind of take time out of my regular job to do things like right. go to conferences or write blogs or whatever it is. And now I can actually do it full time. So I'm discovering like that. I really enjoy, for example, doing video tutorials. Like, Oh, sure. I, yeah. I just started doing that like uh, last week or two weeks ago. And I'm like learning how to do the audio and learning how to edit and do all this stuff and I'm really enjoying it. And I discovering that because I'm a video visual learner, oh, sure. I feel like that's partially why I'm really enjoying it because I'm, I'd much rather watch a video on how to do something than read a blog and right. other people are the other way around. So for me to be able to actually create that content myself, like it means a lot to me. So I've really loved that I'm discovering that certain things that make us happy, which is very important this year, of course, right. to get to the bottom of, okay, what's going to make you happy? What's going to bring you joy? I'm with you on that. I'm a visual learner. If you can show me it, I can, assuming I can physically do it, I can do it. Other, But talking, like, well, whatever. So I, I do it all the time. You know, I, I was having a problem with my snowblower. <laughs> and so what I do, <laughs> I Google and, oh, there's a video. Oh yeah, let me check that out. Like, oh, that's not so bad. And you know, I, I bought a new bike trainer to help survive the winter and I had to change the cassette on it, which I've never done before. And luckily enough for me, there was a video. And so I, you know, was able to, I think successfully, it hasn't fallen apart yet. You know, give me a couple of weeks. Maybe, maybe I screwed something up. But... Well, that's fantastic. It's incredible. Like how many videos and resources you have out there, like, you know, Years ago, you would have to call up your parents right? or like a friend and they'd be like, I have no idea. But now like you have access to so many people that are nice enough to like record themselves fixing right. this thing, right. which is amazing to me. Well, I, I, I seem to recall there used to be like a series of books that you could buy to teach you home electronics or, you know, here's how to wire your house or here's how to do basic plumbing. And yeah, no, we just have videos now. We just like, oh, let me mm -hmm. see how that works. Oh, yeah, I can probably do that. You know, maybe, you know, worst case, I guess I'll just call somebody. We'll make that problem go away. But as long as it's not electrical. Oh, I won't touch that. <laughs> won't touch that. No, I, I've long since realized that's out of my, my purview. We actually had some new fixtures installed. And while they were here, they, they swapped out a bathroom fan too for us. And I thought, well, you guys need to cut off the power, right? They're like, no. Really? You're not going to kill yourself? No, nah, we know what we're doing. Cool. Better you than me because, yep. you know, I, I've, I've replaced smoke detectors. That's as close as I'll get to electricity. But beyond that, uh, more power to them. So. Mm -hmm. well, so speaking of that, I know you recently started up with JetBrains. So, so tell me how that's been going and, and, and how's that working out for you? Yeah. Um, so I started mid-October, so about a month and a half ago. And um, it's been really great. Um, I, it's kind of an interesting progress of the year because sure. at the beginning of it, like things were going really well and then <laughs> just kind of, um, stuff hit the fan <laughs> with COVID and yeah. all this stuff. And, um, you know, I was really struggling to figure out, okay, you know, what's, uh, am I enjoying my job? Should I be looking for new opportunities? Um, what am I you know, what, what's going to make me happy here. And, um, I was actually applying for traditional development jobs. Sure. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden my husband's like, well, you've really enjoyed going to conferences and talking to developers and doing all these things. Why don't you look 
had something in that area and i was like huh. yeah. I, you know it's like why didn't i think of that right. um yeah and i reached out to trisha g yeah. and she's awesome and I was like, huh, Trisha, do you still have a posting uh, for a job? And she's like, well, we just hired someone, but let me see what I can do. And she went off and talked to the right people. And it was just amazing that they could even make room for me. Because awesome. for me, it's like, you know, people like Trisha or Hattie or like folks from JetBrains that they know how to uh, connect with the developer. They know how to not feel it like, you know, typical ads or marketing. It's like really legitimately trying right. to help with their products. Right. And, you know, I was thinking if I want to do this job, I want to do it with someone that really knows what they're doing and learning those skills from people that know what they're doing. And Trisha would laugh at this point because when I said, <laughs> know what they're doing, she's like, yes <laughs> sure yeah uh we'll go with that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and uh so just being able to like connect with all the dev advocates and JetBrains is a very different company that i'm used to you know they're a lot more like flat structured yeah. and uh like once the ceo was helping me with a tech problem i was having and i'm just kind of like that's cool <laughs> so it's been great back. oh He's back. He yeah. Hi. Oh, he's back. It's Ow. a he. Ow. And he clawed me for my efforts here. Oh, hey, Kat, you need to yeah. lay down. You know, have to be part of the program. <laughs> but sorry about that. So, no problem. I usually have Lucy running around, my dog, but today she's at play care because ah. she needs to get that energy out. She, totally. She, totally. She's going to be like whining. Why aren't you playing with the ball with me? But, um, anyways, yeah, just having kind of a, a folks that you can learn from learn like you know trisha has built years and years of experience in the industry so it's been really great to watch that and then mala has written books and i'm like i can't even imagine <laughs> writing books at all so it's been very um i don't know i i want to say inspirational and intimidating sure. at the very same time sure. because you're like they're so accomplished. I don't know if I, you know, I fit in here, but I'm like, they've embraced me. They've been so awesome and friendly and everyone has been just really great, whether with them or the community. It's just amazing. Well, that's fantastic. I, I'm glad you're, you're part of the community, to be honest with you. You know, I know you and I met at, at DevNexus this year and I was so excited because I'm like, oh, cool. You know, we're going to bump into each other at events and then COVID. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that brings us here. That's that, as I've said before, that's part of my whole motivation to even do this between chair and keyboard is to get a chance to hang out with my friends again, since that, that has sort of disappeared from us. But I, you know, I, I have so much I want to talk about there. I will say, first of all, when it comes to books, Venkat makes it look easy. It's not yes, two weeks. He's remarkably <laughs> lifelike, remarkably lifelike. No, it's, it is not, it is much harder to write a book than that. Although it's, it's very doable. I, I remember I had this, this, he was my intern and then we ended up hiring him and he worked on my team for several years. Then he took the team over after I left. And I remember talking to him some years later and he said to me, you know, I used to think it was like a really big deal that somebody would write a book. And then I realized you'd written a book and then I realized it must not be that big of a deal. And I was like, well, I'm a little offended by that, but thanks, Joe, I guess. But I don't, by the same token, my wife refers to these little eBooks I wrote in the last couple of years as pamphlets. So I don't know. Maybe that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write there. a pamphlet. Start there, <laughs> work your way up. But it's, <laughs> I would argue writing a book, it's, it's kind of like having a kid and there's a lot of effort that goes into it in when you're done, you're like, I'm never going to do that again. And then you forget, and then you decide to do it again <laughs> and rinse, repeat. But I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. But, oh, I should plug. I will actually have Trisha on the show at some point awesome. in next year. I just saw that got scheduled. So I'm very excited for that. So, yay. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. So not that I'm not looking forward to talking with you. You and I have already had that chat. But <laughs> So how did you get into software how did you decide that this is what i want to do for a living and and you know what brought you here yeah so i ended up going to uh university not really knowing exactly what i want to do 
um, just, and I went into undecided engineering. So that Perfect. was fitting. Um, I knew I liked math. I knew I liked physics and all that stuff. So that seemed like a good fit. So I did that for a while and I was sitting in calculus class and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to do this for, even though I love calculus, I was like, oh, is this what my job is going to be like? So I decided to switch to criminal justice <laughs> and uh, with a sociology um, a double major and then a minor in philosophy. Wow. So I did that for a while. Yep. It was very interesting. And I actually enjoyed the classes a lot. Um, but then I was like, a lot of the questions they're asking, the answer to them is it depends. I don't like that. Oh, so it's like architecture. Want... <laughs> exactly. It's like one plus one equal two. I want that. Sure. I don't want, okay, what's the answer to this? Well, it well depends. you know. It's like going to the doctor when they're like, okay, what's wrong with me? Well, <laughs> could be this, could be that. We're not really sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I was like, well, I need something more concrete. Sure. So I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, Dahlia, you should try programming. I think you have the mind for it. So I decided to take classes. I took a C, a Python, and a Java class. Nice. Uh, Java was actually the least favorite of mine at the okay. time. Okay. Because I was like, I don't know what these objects are. I have no idea. And like the teacher- Static would boy, main? Toast. What? Yes. And then the teacher would like bring out a toaster to demonstrate exception handling. And I was just like- I was lost. Actually, my husband was in the same exact class and loved that teacher. <laughs> and I was like, I did not get anything from that. So I really enjoyed the C class because it was very one, two, three, four. You knew exactly what the program was doing. Sure. You know, you know everything was clear, but then these objects. And then one of my friends from high school that went to Iowa State too, he was like, you'll get it. Don't worry. It's just going to click. And then one day it did click. And I was like, oh, I get it now. I know what objects are now. So it did click eventually, but I definitely had some moments with it. Um, so yeah, I took those classes and I was like, oh, I really enjoy telling the computer what to do. Um, and I switched to it and um, I went into software engineering. I kept my minor in philosophy because I just couldn't drop that. It was too good. And um, yeah, that was kind of the journey there. I switched a lot. A lot of people that are in school, I always tell them like, take your time right. choosing your major. No hurry. I was, I, yeah. And I was panicking because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you spend a year figuring it out, it's better than choosing bad career than hating it for the right. rest of your career. Right. So, and there is a lot of avenues, you know, because I was having kind of a, all right, is programming the right thing for me moment. And then I was like, well, maybe it's not the right you know, what I'm working on is just not making me happy anymore. Maybe I should try something else. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of the journey to where I got to programming and I've really enjoyed it ever since. Well, that's awesome. I, I, I second the philosophy minor. Now I, I have a computer science undergrad, but I started as a chemistry major and mm. I enjoyed the chemistry. I liked playing with that stuff. Although I will admit it was really frustrating when you'd reach like step 17 and you'd screw something up. And the only option was <sighs> start over. You know, and then I looked at computers and I realized, wait, if I make a mistake on line 37, I just go fix line 37. It's like, that's easier. Mm -hmm. And there's no known carcinogens in any of the experiments that we're doing in the in the <laughs> teaching lab. So, you know, plus, pluses and minuses. But in fairness, I, I think the the logic class I took was more beneficial to me than any of the math that I took as a computer science mm -hmm. major. So I, I, I echo the, the the philosophy side of that. But oh, that's that's very cool. Yeah, I wonder if like people that like com sci are attracted to philosophy because it's kind of applying logic to real life. Yeah. So it's it's always been fascinating for me just talking about philosophy and and that kind of thing. Well, so much of what we're doing is this puzzle. It's trying to figure out how to make the computer do this thing. I love I love what you said. Tell the computer what to do. That's the way I've always phrased it too. I love making the computer do something and and to your point, so much of what we try to do, especially with, with customers is, well, what's your real need? What's the real itch mm -hmm. here? Let me pull that out. I know you're trying to give me a solution. You know, my, mm -hmm. my wife's a business analyst and she constantly tells me, don't solution me, tell me what your requirements are. You know, and, and so I think that's part of it for us too, is trying to pull that apart, tease that apart, and then figure out how to do that within the constructs that we have and the tools that we have. It's, I, I agree with you, it's one of my yeah. favorite parts of this, but. 
Do you think that's a learned skill? Can you learn that skill or is it something that you just kind of have? Because I've always wondered that with architecture too. So I, I, I think you sort of have to have that mindset. I do think it exhibits itself in different ways. You know, there, there's nothing magical necessarily about computer science as an undergraduate degree or anything like that. You know, I mean, one of the best developers I know was a chemistry major. You know, I've seen people come at this from non-traditional quote unquote ways. And, and they're, they certainly have that sort of logical thinking, I think is the important aspect of it. But that certainly can manifest itself, be trained in, in various ways. Now, not everybody's born with that, you know, or, or chooses to develop it maybe would be another way of thinking of it there's something about wanting to take that apart and grind on it and figure out what's happening much in the same way you know we were talking earlier i visited the mayo clinic a couple years ago and and the doctors that get into surgery don't have a problem cutting a human body open and i'm like you know i mean i don't (laughs) think there's anything that could get me to want to do that for a living and yet that's what these folks excel at i think Mm -hmm. that's okay you know that, that there's it's good that we all have different interests and and things that, that get us excited but anyway yeah i definitely agree with that my sister is very creative and she's a lot better at marketing and all those things and i'm just always thinking i'm so glad i don't have to do that all the time because i just would not enjoy it and i'm so grateful other people can because otherwise yeah. the software would never get sold right. if we were all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's a bug right there. <laughs> we'll go fix that. You you guys go figure out how to speak about it and we'll we'll go fix this little beep defect back here. But, but no, I, I I hear you exactly. I mean, there's plenty of stuff that that I wouldn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. You know, I think about mm-hmm. like lawyers and some of the stuff they do. I'm like, nope, nope, don't don't oh, wanna... patent patents, reading nope. patents. I had Mm-mm. to do that like a f- um this year. I read so many patents and I'm like, someone has to read through those and review it mm-hmm. and do a searches. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. have so much respect for them. Yep. I would never, yep. never do that job. And that's okay because they, they're staying us going, wait, you look at this sort of languagey like thing. It kind of looks like English, but not yeah. really. And it has a really constrained grammar and you guys are cool with that. We're like, yeah, yeah, it's great. And you're like, yeah. Oh no, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, exactly. different folks, that's perfectly natural. So how yeah. have you adapted to sort of the presenting side of this job? I know that can be a bit of a challenge for some folks. A lot of us are a little more introverted. We get into software and then, oh, you want me to get up in front of how many people and, and do what now for how long? So how, how has that transition been for you? Um, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was kind of scary at the beginning. So I initially like getting into conferences, speaking and all this stuff. I had not even thought about it until one of my mentors mentioned it. And um, Kevin Sutter, he's the best mentor I have. And he was like, Dahlia, you should really apply for conferences. I'm like, I don't have anything interesting to say to apply for a conference. And I know that's like a common theme with even my friends or coworkers. They're like, I don't think I have anything interesting to present that would, would anyone would want to listen to. And then he's like, no, like really think about a topic that could help people find something that, you know, both interests you and will help people as well. Um, And that's when I started looking into like migration and stuff, because that's something that interests, even though migration is not like the most attractive topic, I found something in it that would be also helpful for developers. And I keep, I kept reminding myself, I'm like, you know, if one person goes to my conference talk and can get something out of it, Mm -hmm. that's, That's what's important. It's not important like how smart people think I am or, you know, how well, uh, you know, spoken or whatever it is. It's like, just make sure you communicate your point effectively. And after they go to your talk, they can do their job better. Right. So that was kind of the, the motivation is like, all right, let's get a talk together and uh, do it in a way that would really help developers with their problems to so come up with a you know good problem. So some solutions that I found kind of do the research for them basically and come up with a good story. And that's what I did. Um, I came up with a topic and submitted it to DevNexus actually. Yay! 
and yeah and um they were very nice about it they were like yeah we want new speakers they're always looking for new speakers fresh blood and all that stuff so um i submitted it and the main thing after that was practice yeah. practice 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 um i you know you know, a lot of people get kind of shy about asking others for help mm -hmm. i highly recommend just kind of you know shutting that part of your brain off and like going off and asking people that think you think do a good job presenting. Like for example, Kevin Sutter was uh, always a good presenter in the community and all this stuff. So I asked him to sit with me during a session and just listen to the topic. We had some, um, some other working groups within the company where people would be interested in speaking. And I invited some of those folks to my presentation, just different people that, you know, will give you good feedback. Yeah. Won't just say, no, you did a good job. Yeah. No, they'll give you legitimate feedback and tell you, you know, this is where I got lost or whatever. And right. then just keep improving on that. Um, and that's, that's how I felt very, a lot more comfortable doing it than I would have otherwise. And now that it's, virtual there is less pressure <laughs> to be in person and get exactly everything right. right but it's also a challenge because you can't see the people yes. you're presenting to so, so it, if if if, it, if i were a new speaker i would think okay maybe i should start now practicing so that i can get some of these um skills down and then when i'm in person i would have been practicing at home and then the next level is doing it in person yep. next level is so on and so forth um so it's always it's always good to practice mm -hmm. um it's always good to look at what works for you and um just kind of iterate on it and like listening to speakers like you or other folks in the community what do you really like right. about them things like that that really helps too yeah you should absolutely steal you know that that's the only way we get better at this we end up synthesizing those people that we watch and respond to, and then you, you find your own kind of authentic voice that comes out of it. It's, it's why it's virtually impossible to present someone else's deck, at least to present it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it, I just, I mean, my approach to slides is lots and lots of slides and that's just how I think. And I, I don't know how to do it any other way. And to me, that's perfectly natural. But for most people, they just don't understand. Like, I'm sorry, how many slides do you have for this talk? <laughs> I'm like, well, like today I did a, I did a three hour workshop and I went through a little under 500 slides, you know, and, and I would have gone through more except uh, I was answering questions and sort of telling stories. So it, it, you know, that I only got through that many. So nature of the beast. How do you remember what you're about to say? Presenter mode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I pretty much have to do presenter mode unless it's material that, that I've done so often that it is pretty much committed to memory because, well, and, and, you're absolutely right about the practice. The practice is what what separates you know the good from the also ran, and it, it's that ability to either improv as you're going or go. Oh wait, that's right. This is really what I meant to say here. Um, but presenter mode is your friend, as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, I remember seeing your presentation at Dev Nexus about you know architectural. Um, it was. I'm trying to remember the topic because I was like nodding my head the whole time. Um, but it was very impressive that you were going through so many slides and I was sitting there wondering, how is he doing this? Cause like, I would not remember what I'm about to say on one of the slides. And then also like thinking that way, like you're telling the story very logically so that people are still interested because when you have one slide with a lot of text, like people are like, Ugh, oh, snoring. they're, they're going to read the slide at best. They yeah. read the slide at worst, you know, they've. Taking a nap, <laughs> but I, I would like to get some of the, the insight on like, how do you come up with some of those outline and content? Because it was like really good, which is why I came up and talked to you about it. I was like, I need, I need to know Nate. <laughs> well, we, you know, you and I could absolutely have, have a, you know, an, an off the record conversation about presenting. God knows that's one of my, my favorite areas to, uh, to get into for sure. But you know, it. That's it's it's part of just that that growth, right? And and you will every time we do something, we get better at it. You know, it's the repetitions. I I did a variant of I think that same talk at Spring One a couple of years ago, and it just everything just worked. You know, you have that experience where the crowd was into it and you were into it. And it was just it was that nice feedback loop, and it was oh so much fun. And I had somebody come up to me afterwards and say, you know, how do you get good at presenting? And I said, we well, got to practice. 
And they were sort of like, well, I thought there was like a, a trick or a pill. And it's like, yeah, no, I'm sorry. You know, I just, I mean, there are techniques. There are, you know, certainly a lot of good books and things out there on how to do it. But at the end of the day, you just got to get up in front of crowds and, and do it. You know? and, and that could be terrifying. The nerves never go away, by the way. There's, there's always nerves. The nerves are what tells you that, that you care and that it matters. You know, if, if you weren't nervous about it, that that's, you know, that that's a little concerning because then you must be a little checked out on it, but, but you get used to it and you just start to feed on that and it just kind of goes from there. But I, if yeah. you would have, if you'd have told me when I was in high school that I'd make a living talking to people and giving presentations, I'd have said no chance. Cause I did not consider myself an extrovert, did not think of myself in that way. And, you know, now I can't imagine doing anything else, at least not anytime soon. Yeah, it's awesome. Like the more you learn about yourself and the more you kind of get into your niche, it's really cool. Yeah. My, my wife jokes that I don't have a real job and I don't think she's wrong about that necessarily. It's a non-traditional job. I would definitely agree with that. You know, and I certainly do appreciate that sort of creative freedom that we get in this mm -hmm. role to, you know, I, I think it's the best job out there because we get to play with toys and then go explain it to other people and teach other people. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think the teaching aspect of it is so nice. I've always loved teaching anyways. Like I tutor calculus. I would sit even like my cousins down when we were really young and like learn, like teach them certain things and all this stuff. Like even if they don't want to, I'm going to sit them down, teach them things. And I feel like it's an extension of that, just kind of teaching people how to right. use the product and, um, you know, learning what's not working. Like that's something that I really enjoy about it mm -hmm. is like getting that feedback and then feeding it back and then seeing the product change right. because of that. Like that is the most fulfilling part of any of it. Yeah. Um, I created an issue, I think a couple of weeks ago about something that I saw and the developers were really excited about getting that feedback and like, it might actually make it in the next release. And I was like, oh my goodness, wait, I'm making a difference. <laughs> now I was on the receiving end of that Yay. where you get too many feature requests well, and you're like, can yeah. you yeah. slow down with their suggestions? Right. So it's like, you know, making it on the field is definitely something that's sure. fulfilling. Well, and you have to wade through that a little bit too of, uh -huh. oh yeah, sure. No problem. We can change it to purple or whatever it is you need us to do. And yeah, it's not that that is the part of I think this job that that doesn't maybe get enough attention is our ability to take that information from our development communities, the folks that are running in these problems and get it into the R&D units, mm -hmm. where they might they don't always get that connectivity, you know, they're they're focused on on features functionality that, that they're getting pressure from product ownership. And we can help them sometimes see that which, you know, is an important part of the role. But. Yeah, the developer advocate. You right. know, I keep going back to the title. It's like a developer advocate. Yep. Um, we had a role like that at IBM called a lab advocate, and it was very similar, um, but then with customers instead of just developers in the field. And I was thinking, you know, a lot of times when tooling doesn't really reach um, popularity or people don't find it helpful, a lot of times it's because there has been kind of a disconnect between the developers using the actual tool and the product owners, 100%. Because, you know, they're not trying to understand how people are using these tools. They're just kind of pushing out what they think is helpful. And I think that's, that's an important gap and it's not measurable. So it's really hard to figure that out, yeah. but it's so important when you do it right. Software has traditionally had this gap between those of us that are writing the code and the people who are using the applications we're building. And that inevitably leads to bad software. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not that the people chose a bad language or a bad framework or they're bad mm -hmm. coders. It's that there's that disconnect. You know, I, I was at a doctor's appointment last year and I was watching these folks struggle with this new piece of software. And I, I said, well, you know, how many, I, you guys are having issues. And I said, yeah, it takes us 12 clicks to do this one simple thing. And you see that constantly. And, and so I typically, when I run into that, I sort of apologize on behalf of software engineering saying, I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's my fault that you have bad software. And I, and it usually results in the fact that they didn't let someone like me talk to someone like you and we could have bridged that gap, but 
Uh, it's it's amazing what happens when we talk to the people who use this stuff in the real world. Definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. So speaking of of pandemic times, you know, we were talking about this before we got started, you know, rough transition here. Uh, how are you doing? How are you holding up? What what are you doing to keep yourself sane in in this bizarro world that we live in? And I I have to always preface that by saying we we are very fortunate that we get to continue to do our jobs and we can do this from home and so we're kind of dealing with zero world problems, but you know, it still takes its toll. And you know, so how are you, what are you doing for self care these days? Sure. Do you <clears> want <throat> the honest answer? <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, I think I'm really digging deep into like, what is make, what makes me happy and what activities fills my, uh, energy meter. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times it's like, all right, just sitting home and watching TV is not really going to do it. Like I need to go out and figure out new experiences somehow, because before it was filled with, you know, traveling every once in a while, going to see a really good movie or yeah, I love eating. So going to restaurants and trying new things and all those things have been taken away. Right. So it definitely takes a toll. So it's a lot of like brainstorming, just kind of, uh, you know, you have a bug and you've tried the solution, it's not working. You try the solution, it's not working. I, I feel like I'm doing that to my brain. Like, nice. okay, um, this is not working. You need to go out and like take walks. Well, that's not gonna work. And like, you know, things like that. So it's a lot of improvising and like digging deep on what you enjoy. And sure. I feel like if the pandemic hadn't happened, I probably would not have um, switched jobs potentially, sure. or even like switch career trajectories um because i wasn't thinking like i really need to figure out you know what's making me the most happy like i i wasn't relying so much on work to bring me sure. satisfaction as much as i am now because you're spending you know a lot more time doing it right um and it's a lot of time it's you know day to day it's what's bringing that new input in. So if the new input is not making me happy, it's not going to be good. So, you know, I'm dealing with it with, you know, looking for opportunities, figuring out what's really making me happy, um, de valuing experiences, mm -hmm. um, and making sure I'm, I'm watching myself with social media. Sure. I think that's really important. Like, only letting in information that is positive and muting a lot of words on Twitter, <laughs> if you can yep. guess. Um, with politics, you know, uh, limiting that as much as you can be with being a responsible citizen. Right. Um, you know, all those things, just kind of taking control over your experience and what you're letting in and if things are working for you. Something that has really worked well for me too um, I heard about having this gratitude journal oh, sure. uh, where in the morning you wake up, you say uh, what you're grateful for, what can you do in the day to make you happy and some affirmations. And then at night you just go over what went well and what you would do differently. So kind of a retrospective where we do it. You're doing that every day. Right. Um, and that has really, really helped. I've never been a journal writer, sure. but it just kind of changing your mindset to start your day with something positive and end your day with something positive has been really nice. It's called the five minute journal. You can sure. do it online or you can do it by paper. I like pencil and paper. So yeah. I did that, but I think that has really started my day off on positive, um, thoughts and that has really helped day to day, but I'm taking it one day at a time, <laughs> trying things out. It's nice to communicate, to know that other people feel the same way. So that's why I'm so open to talk about it mm -hmm. is because I've seen so many people, um, you know, friends like you or other people on Twitter that, you know, I know where they're saying, you know, I'm struggling with this. It's okay to be struggling with right. it. You're trying your best. Don't be too hard on yourself. And then here's what has helped me. And then just go over that. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I mean, it is, it's so easy to kind of get caught up in or easy to forget about the fact that these aren't normal times, you know, that, that we're not just working from home or working from home while, you know, our children are learning from home and we're, you know, elbow to elbow with our, our family. My, my wife was working on our Christmas cards over the weekend and she wrote this little note and it was something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing, 
even though we're spending almost every waking moment together, we still mostly like each other or something to that effect. And <laughs> it's really true because, you know, you, you do this job and you spend a lot of time on the road. I mean, this is without a doubt the most extended period of time I've been at home, frankly, since my son was born. And on the one hand, it's very nice because it, I actually do have a very lovely family and I have a very comfortable bed. <clears throat> but it is different when you're around people all the time and there isn't an escape hatch. You know, my wife would be normally be working over my shoulder when I'm doing something like this. She's kind enough to relocate to the living room or the kitchen or somewhere else, but it is different to say the least. And we shouldn't expect that it'll just be like normal. And I, I don't know if you saw the tweet. I think it was Emily tweeted out last week that she noticed she, she and her friends are saying, I love you a lot more than they did mm -hmm. in the past. And I've noticed that too. And I think that's good. This is sort of helping us focus a little bit that way and remind ourselves that, oh man, I do have some really great friends and I'm so thankful that, that they're in my life. And yeah, I, like I definitely saw that and liked it because I had just thought, you know, one of my best friends, I was, you know, hanging up and it said, I love you. And I was like, I'm usually not that sentimental and right. say that stuff, but it's like any small uh -huh. thing to show other people that you appreciate them. Like, why not? Like, it's great. And uh, speaking of wives and spouses, I think it's also teaching me to communicate exactly what works for me. And sure. before you do that, you have to figure out what works for you first right. and then communicate it with your spouse. So it seems like you've, you're you learning a lot more about yourself and what's working for the other person. For example, we've determined that we work in separate rooms. <laughs> That works very well because we have very different work uh -huh. styles and I think uh -huh. that works just fine. Uh, for me, I, I love having my own workstation and I am grateful my husband takes a different room, our Lego room, because we have lots of Lego in our, in our house and uh, that works well for us. Well, I, I, at one point, my wife and I were both doing a meeting at the same time and someone on her call said, oh, Christine, I think you left the TV on. And she said, no, no, that's my husband. <laughs> I, I don't have an indoor Not voice. that good. Well, I, I don't have an indoor voice. I mean, that, that's part of being in this job is you you learn to speak loudly because that's the job. And, and so that you just carries over. And apparently these headphones that I use are just muting enough that I can't hear how loud I am. And mm -hmm. so she's like, you do realize you're shouting. I'm like, really? She's like, you're shouting. I'm like, okay, sorry. It, it, I have had that yeah. issue too in meetings where my husband's sitting right next to me and he's like, why are you getting so loud? I'm like, cause I'm excited. Right. I'm like helping them learn right. this thing. <laughs> That's I'm the like, job. I, I have to get this loud. It yeah. just, yeah. happens yeah well that's what it should be i mean that's the, the folks that excel at this that's part of it right is that passion comes across and the, you know mm -hmm. we're getting excited about it I, and I love the teaching part of it you know to me that's that's all i consider me this job too. is is teaching and you know mm -hmm. that's that's fantastic well so we will eventually go back on the road it's it's gonna happen you know whether it's it's spring or fall of 2021 is anyone's guess but i i fully expect eventually we'll be back to <laughs> normal where are you looking forward to going is there any any city or country you're like oh my god i can't wait to get back there um i think it's mainly going to egypt and seeing my extended family and eating some good food mm. um and going to qatar too okay. but it's a lot for me a lot of it is not the travel itself but more the people yeah um, so I would love to go home and just see family, but then on the leisurely, like entertainment front, I've always wanted to go to places that have good food. So I would love to go to like India. Like I love Indian food. So I really want to go to India. I've always wanted to go to Thailand. I want to go to Thailand. So I don't know if there's any dev conferences there, but we should really start some so that we can go and visit. Um, but, or South America, mm. you know, for me, it's not about the landmark. It's about the cuisine. <laughs> well, so you would like what... South African food because mm -hmm. they have a lot of animals. Mm -hmm. So I, I distinctly remember last year when we went to, it was last year, or the year before I see time has no meaning. It's a flat circle. And we were in, we went to Cape Town, we went to Johannesburg and at least one of those cities, I don't remember which one we actually had 
like the safari dinner, which was mm. six different kinds of animal, if I remember right. There's like a springbok in there and you know, a few other things. It was like, yeah, it was tasty. This this so. uh chat is not for vegetarians. <laughs> no, no. I, I we should have put like an explicit warning or something on I here. Know. No vegans uh, you know, are were harmed in the recording of today's show. Yes. But that's funny because one time I was um posting something about the fair. Uh, I think it was a Minnesota fair or some fair. And I posted a picture of me with a turkey leg, like eating it very happily. And one of my vegetarian uh, co-workers is like, that's really hard on me to see. <laughs> like, oh boy, I should like put a asterisk on this right, if you're right. a vegetarian. <laughs> Skip this one. But... Uh, and we were just talking about Foco, Foco mm, de Cho. Yep, oh man, yep. that, that meat just... Keep, keep it coming. It. Keep it yep. coming. With that bread that they have. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Uh now I'm hungry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good times. No, we'll um I can give you some recommendations on, on oh, some yes. places to eat. There's no getting that. around that. Do do you have like a favorite restaurant? Is is there any place that you're you're can't wait to get back to on the road? Any anything that jumps out at you? Um, I think I miss Fogo to Cho a lot, like the Brazilian steakhouse. Yeah just that's like my happy place of course it's spendy so you don't go all the time true true but just sitting and then having people come with right. slabs of meat like i think this is the most amazing idea anyone has ever come up with <laughs> another round please <laughs> just keep them coming and then you don't have to even get up i no, mean like that's it's really even better bit of, yeah yeah like a buffet you have to get up get the food all the stuff you don't even have to get up it's so american mm -hmm. i don't know why it's called brazilian but <laughs> it's very very american <laughs> yeah i i love those and i love um in, in the cities there's a lot of good uh, mediterranean restaurants uh, there's a place called fulfilla that we love going to yeah. they have really good bread and meats and all that stuff um that's you know one of our favorites to go to um we actually celebrated after we got married in the cities we celebrated there um, as kind of a, we need to go somewhere. And it's not like a sit down, a nice place at sure, all, sure. but it had good food. And that's what I care about. I don't yeah. care. Like the atmosphere is nice. Okay. And like the food is like this small. And I'm like, no, I need like a good chunk of like plate with a bunch of rice, a lot of meat. Like, I don't want this foo-foo stuff. I want real food. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. Is is there anything that you're you're streaming these days that's making you happy? Any I know I know you said you've been experimenting. What makes me happy? What doesn't? Is there is there yes. anything on on the Netflix or the the Disney or anything that's that's working for you? Yes. So I am a big believer in like watching things that are not very like dramatic and like sad and documentary stuff right now. Like right. usually if I feel like my mental state can take it, comedy, I will watch comedy, it. Comedy, comedy, comedly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. My husband is watching Ozark and I'm like, I am not in the mental state to watch Ozark or Breaking Bad right now. Right. I've already watched it. Right. I'm good. So I'm watching a lot of like positive things. So um, I really enjoyed Blackish on oh, Hulu. Okay. Um, it's very positive and it's also a lot of good background on, um, uh, you know, the African-American struggle and, you know, a lot of relevant content, but also in a way that is, um, you know, how do you make a change and all the stuff and an understanding the experience. Um, so I really enjoyed Blackish. I've been listening to a lot of, um, books. And I'm also into like murder mystery stuff, but it's also fiction. So it's like, there's this separation okay. as long as it's fiction and just, I pretend like that doesn't happen in real life. I'm good there. So I've been listening to a lot of that. My husband's like, I'm really concerned how much you like these. <laughs> I'm like, just don't piss me off. Right. You're right. going to be just fine. You know, don't do anything to make me mad. It'll all be fine. <laughs> well, my, my good friend, Rashu Gandhi has a, a series on, I want to say it's like a serial killer. And if memory serves, it's actually based in the cities. And the way he talks about it, I'm like, is this like an instruction manual? Should I be worried about you? Is there something else you want to tell me, Raju? But you know, I'll try to track down that is and, and send it to you. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. I can't handle, you know, the, the super drama, tension-y kind of stuff right now. It's just not not worth it. although ironically enough i'm actually reading midnight in chernobyl right now which is mm. as you can guess about the nuclear explosion <clears throat> and 
it, it is fascinating just to sort of review that whole scenario and the cultural issues along with other things that ultimately cause that, but, uh, but not necessarily a pick me up. Um, yeah. Better than definitely. reading like the road or something like that, which oof, boy, don't, don't go down that path. If you're want to have any kind of, you know, hope for humanity. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I definitely agree that you should choose a media that you should be consuming. Um, so, of course, I love Marvel. So it, yeah. anything related to that. I love Harry Potter. I'm, I'm wearing my Hogwarts shirt. So I just re-watch and uh, we get Lego um, sets that match Harry yeah. Potter. So you're building nice. Harry Potter Lego sets while we were watching Harry Potter. So it's multitasking so Fantastic. extra happy time for me yeah um so and lots of cartoons like i have no problem watching you know disney plus oh yeah all the time no problem so yeah uh and netflix has a lot of the older shows like sister sister or any of those like really like silly but you're having fun kind of right. show it's very nice we we fell in love with ted lasso this year on apple plus mm -hmm. that was Phenomenal, very funny, very uplifting. It, it is the content that I needed in 2020, without a doubt. So. Yeah. Uh, well, so do you have like a favorite meal, like a comfort meal, or or this is what I have for my birthday or a celebration? What what do you hearken back to other than just bring me all the meats? Oh yeah. Um. Uh, so we have this dish, and it's uh, it's stuffed grape leaves. Oh, so you yeah. get you get grape leaves. And they're like processed a little bit so that they're not just dry. And you stuff them with rice okay. and spices and you mm. roll one by one. And my mom Labor makes... intensive. It is labor intensive. So when my mom makes it, there's like a celebration. Like... Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. She made stuffed grape leaves. That's like my go-to ultimate favorite uh, food. Okay. Um, but when I'm can't get access to that kind of thing my happy meal is going to taco bell <laughs> i'm saying that very low <laughs> i can't you know if my we'll, mom we'll edit that out of the uh, recording kinda... huh? <laughs> if my mom heard me go from great place to taco right, bell she's right. gonna be like oh goodness dahlia but i don't know i think everyone has their like junk food that uh -huh. they just go to i go yeah. to taco bell yeah i have my specific order that I like and sometimes mm -hmm. I change it up a little bit but that's kind of the things that I like and uh definitely get judgment from family members because of it but I still like it there's nothing wrong with that it's like what's like, yours tell me well, your guilty pleasure so I don't oh, feel bad man so the the first thing that pops in my head would be like a pop tart you know that's mm -hmm. one of those things where we bought a couple boxes sort of back in the spring and I have to be very judicious about them. I would put Thin Mints into that category as well because the serving size of a Thin Mint is the tube as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know how anybody just eats two or three of those. But, you know, it, it's interesting. There, There's, you ever had those, uh, they're, they're like a puffed kind of corn thing, but they're cheesy and they're just, they just dissolve. It's not a Cheeto. It's softer than that. I, I'm blanking is on the name. Is it the round ones? Yeah. They like just, the pot, well, the there's pops? the, there's the ball, but then there's the one that's like the Cheeto and the ball got together and, and it, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the name that. of them, but we, we did a road trip and you know, you stop in the random gas station to gas up, hit the restroom and then you buy like a snack. Cause of course you just, you know, just to be polite and those things disappear fast. You know, it's so easy cause they just dissolve right on your tongue. And so your, your brain doesn't even realize you ate anything. And, and so you're just like, Oh, the whole bag's gone. Oh, oops. <laughs> we so. always have like a bag of puffs whenever we go on road trips it's nice. just an excuse to get puffs right because i love that like cheetos kind of just keep puff just keep eating them a bunch but you you didn't tell me a chain restaurant that you would be oh a chain like, restaurant someone would judge you for liking it so i feel better well you know so i, I very distinctly remember i was i i, I think we were in antwerp it was Matthew McCullough and I, and it was towards the end of the trip and we'd been doing our best to like eat local. And we were just like, I got to have McDonald's. I yes. just need something that I know exactly what it's going to be. And that's, and that's what we did. We, we found McDonald's like in the local mall and 
you know, I think we each got like the 20 piece McNugget or something and just like, oh. <laughs> it, it, it does remind me on my, on our honeymoon, my wife and I went to Greece and this was in, I think the beginning of like our second week, we, we were in Athens, it was raining. We'd eaten a lot of Greek salads and we were just like, I can't eat another salad. I don't want to leave the room. We ordered Pizza Hut. <laughs> and it was wonderful. So. It sometimes you just need that. Yeah. Last year we went to Switzerland and we got McDonald's. <laughs> now it was a lot more expensive yes. than it was in yes. the US. Yes. <laughs> there... So I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have bought this. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I try, and, and this is something Neil Ford is sort of, I guess, beaten into me that, that they can't export restaurants from a city. You know, and so part of the, the, benefit of our job getting to travel these cool places is you get to experience things that only locals would experience mm -hmm. back before pandemic time i was at a spin class with my wife on a saturday morning and the instructor when you're doing like recovery periods would try to throw out like a getting to know you question you're supposed to ask the people around you and so one of the questions was you know what's your favorite restaurant and so you know my wife's on one side of me she already knows she's not going to ask me these questions but the dude next to me decided he wanted to engage right <laughs> so he's like yeah so my favorite restaurant is blah 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 and i'm like uh-huh and he's like what's yours i'm like core by claire smith oh i've never heard of that where is that <clears throat> it's in london and it, it, it's i felt so weird saying that because i desperately miss the fact that i have not eaten there in 2020 i feel so bad i the first time I went there, it was so good. I immediately said, I'm back here in a month. When can I get on your schedule? And I'm like, you can come in at 10. I'm like, great, don't care. You know, so I, I can't wait to get back to Claire's cooking. It's it's a running joke in my house that whatever Claire makes, I'll eat. I know I could tell you plenty of stories about that. But anyway, it, it is this fascinating. And my cat is back again. Well, hi, Han. You know, Han, mm -hmm. you could just stay here and be part of the conversation instead of coming well, of and going. Of course, it's Han. Han yes, Han, Han, Han. Han and Chewy. Oh, the other boy. one's called Chewbacca. Oh, he's gonna oh, go. You would like well, there our you are. Lego sets. We have so many Star Wars Lego sets. We're running out of room. Oh, I could totally relate. My my son, he's a little older now. He's thirteen, but he's got all the Legos. I think, and I almost bought like the Millennium Falcon just for myself. Oh, um, but. You know, I couldn't quite. You can pull that find one off. room for it. It's awesome. That's the thing. They're so cool. We we. It's hard to keep them all together and and whatnot. But you know, first world problems to say the yes. least. So yes. Well, let let's round out here with a few of my my favorite my lightning round questions here. So, coffee, espresso, or tea? Depends on the mood. Okay. Uh, tea in the morning, decaf. Otherwise, coffee okay. when I really need it. Gotcha. I'm trying not to get addicted. Well, I mean, in this line of work, uh, caffeine is your friend. <laughs> There's no getting around that. You know, it's it's one of those weird jobs where you go from having a normal thing and then, oh, no, you got to get up at four in the morning to get to the airport. You know, espresso becomes a, a must. How about pie versus cake? Cake. Okay. Because, you know, we're rolling into Thanksgiving here, which means pumpkin pie and other sort of things are prop cropping up. And, of course, in my household, it's a challenge because my son doesn't like pumpkin pie. And I'm just like, well, we can still make one. He just won't eat it. I don't see the problem here. But my wife disagreed. Now, now you, you live in my part of the world where we have neither ocean nor mountains. But if you have the choice, which one would you want to hang ocean. out here? Ocean. Love yeah. It. Ocean. Yes. Uh, because in, the, in Egypt, we have both the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. So you enjoy like really clear waters. Nice. And I just love that. See, I, I would like to trade some of our lakes for a couple of mountains from, from yes. Colorado. I think that'd be fair. You know, have a thousand lakes for, you know, <laughs> just give us three or four of your teeners. You won't even notice, you know, how hard could that be? But now this one, I'm intrigued to see how you respond. I think I know what you're going to say, but food truck or Michelin stars? Oh, food truck. Easily. If I pay this much money, I don't get satisfied. I'm just going to be mad. <laughs> okay. I... I'm going to have to, at some point, we're going to find an excuse to get you to London. We'll get you to core. And I feel confident you will walk out satisfied. I would I feel love confident. That. So, I would love all right. That. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll have to try to make that work in 2021 or 2022 or, or I don't know, whatever we return someday. to normal. Someday <laughs> we're going to get you there. And, you know, I, I, I hope I haven't oversold it, but, uh, and this one, I, I, we already talked about this DC or Marvel. Marvel. 
That's oh right goodness answer. gracious they're trying so hard but no they will never match it i'm sorry but I, yeah i am Marvel. excited about wonder woman 1984 though i, I think that's gonna be it's good. a cute attempt i mean they're right. all cute it, attempts i mean fair. i like actually i like suicide squad okay um surprisingly like it's yeah. just fun yeah but it's not like you don't go for the story or the action yeah. it's kind of like oh it's cute um but i don't know i want to like it yeah i went to you know i watch aquaman i watch all those ones and i really wanted to like it but i'm like nothing is yeah. touching marvel yeah. marvel 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 no, I, I, yep. I have to agree with you on that one yeah uh, let's see we already touched oh, how about game of thrones versus lord of the rings which one are you going to reach for neither harry <gasps> potter i have oh, to argue right. with this all yes, right. I have That's to argue fair. with my husband about it. I'm like, okay. Lord of the Rings is basically walking, then walking, then walking, then walking. That's fair. And I, I know I've offended like half of the audience right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, but Harry Potter all the way for okay. me. No, I, 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 it is interesting that, that in Lord of the Rings, they walk and walk and walk. And then, oh, you mean we could have just hopped on the back of these giant eagle things? Or it would have been a much shorter book than that. And yes, and he's like, he wants me to watch the extended edition, and I'm just like, I, I wish I can. I just, I don't know if I have it. There's in already me. so many hours. Like what? <laughs> I, I am contemplating another run through Game of Thrones for this winter. You know, we, we were chatting about that earlier. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to get through winter, knowing that what's kept, what got me going through the spring and the summer was I could play golf, I could ride my bike. Now that those are going to be taken away from me, I might have to resort to that. Although I, I am also threatening to maybe learn how to bake bread. I don't know. Do it. Why I'm, I'm, not? I mean, why not? I like carbs. So what, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, yeah. Pasta. I mean, you should make your own pasta, too. That I'd like to try, too. Well, well I, yeah. I, I found this book. I don't know why I had it, but I think it's called, like, <laughs> Salt, Flour, Water, something like that. And it's this person's journey through becoming an artisanal baker. So I guess I'll have to try that. I don't. Yeah, and send it my way. I will, right? I will. Well, again, the beauty of this is, you know, it isn't that hard, you know, for, for us to meet in the middle, you know, and, and exactly. you know, once we get to meet in you know, real space again, which I know will happen someday. I, have you noticed this, like, when you watch old movies or old TV shows and you see things that don't happen anymore, like people smoking yes. in a restaurant, like, oh, my God, people used to smoke in restaurants. Now it's, oh, my God, they're <laughs> in a restaurant together and what to each other i don't understand like do they not uh, oh wait this was before COVID. oh okay i know i, I get it i get it it's fine it's fine so uh, we'll have to do a minnesota meetup Nate. we will we will for sure 100 percent. I, I was so delighted to know that that you're you're you're, you're practically a neighbor in this part of the world mm -hmm. right so you know minnesotans forever well I, I oh my gosh we're, we're already at the top of our hour here the bottom of the hour depending on your point of view i that went really fast. I know I could chat with you forever, but I know you have like a real job to get back to. So we should probably end there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank you your time. for having me. This was really fun. This was great. And I really am very much looking forward to hanging out with you sometime in the future. And, you know, knowing that we're, we're practically neighbors is fantastic. And so thanks for being with me. And I, I just can't wait to, uh, to get to a point where we're back in the same meet space. So Thank yeah, you. me too. Cheers. Thanks for having me. I yeah, appreciate it. You bet. Well, and good luck with the new job. And, and you know, I, I know you're going to do great. And I, I just can't wait to, to see all the cool stuff that you come up with. So, well, awesome. Thanks so much. Well, thanks, Dolly. So next week, I'm coming back again next week. We've got um, Mary is going to be with us. So let me go ahead and flash that up. And we'll see you guys next week at our normal time. Let's do that.